championship so close he can taste it. Twelve drivers set to go here. Second rung of the road to Indy, ready to fire things up for their first of two races here this weekend in Mid Ohio. And it's time to fire up these engines, ladies and gentlemen. Joining me down here on pit lane to give the command one of our guests from Cooper Tires. Road to Indy driver, start your engines. And there you go, folks. Engines coming to life. Twelve drivers firing up. 250 horsepower behind every one of these drivers. Cooper tires. Tad is PM18 chassis. John Fippen, almost time to go racing. Thanks, Rob. Looking forward to it as these drivers have the engines fired up. The crews stepping away, getting ready for the safety car to leave the pit lane with this 12-car field in tow. Christian Rasmussen looking to extend his points lead over Braden Eves. Those two starting near the front of this race, Abel and Eves, or Eves and Suleiman, excuse me, in row number three, but Rasmussen and Petrov in the front row. So Christian Rasmussen looking to extend his points lead with a victory here at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, but that's the reason they run the races. It's a 25 lap or 45 minute race, whichever comes first. We had a couple yellow flags in the USF 2000 race yesterday. We'll expect uh, probably less of that in these slightly more experienced drivers with a little bit smaller field. Rusty, kind of a slow pace coming out of turn one. Yeah, definitely a slow pace. Uh, Christian Rasmussen just about stopped the car around the corner, uh, let the pace car get way out in front of him, and then accelerated hard. May have been trying to get a little heat in the rear tires, but uh, he has caught now the back of the pace car and brought the rest of the field. As almost all the other cars do something similar here, just uh, at the pit exit. They almost stop the car and then uh, jump on the accelerator, spinning up the rear tires to put a little heat in those uh, rear tires. And we'll watch them now as they are weaving the cars back and forth behind the pace car. So we will look for uh, that start this time by. Lights are still on at this point in the pace car, but we will look to uh, see them go off here in just a minute as uh, they will be making their way around track. Thanks, Tom Michaels. The field coming down uh, into your view as Rob Howden, a breathless Rob Howden, after a sprint up three flights of steps, has just joined us. We'll, we'll uh, get him around to the uh, to the start finish line here, Rob, so you can catch your breath as uh, Tom Michaels has the field in front of him. Yeah, the front of the field already bias here. Single filing it as they'll wait to get everything lined up once they get over there in the Thunder Valley. But a field here. 12 car on the pole, Christian Rasmussen. Rich Grunewald, you've got the, uh, the last of the field coming into your view right now. Yes, I do, and uh, they are coming down through uh, Thunder Valley led by the uh, uh, Mazda Pace Car. These uh, 250 horsepower uh, Tatus chassis machines uh, getting uh, their tires warm, their engines warm, their fluids warm uh, for taking the start uh, this time around. Field beginning to form up two by two. The voice of the road to Indy, Rob Howden, next to me to call the start. Thank you, John. Christian Rasmussen, last year's champion, USF 2000, point leader right now, trying to follow the Kyle Kirkwood trail to Indy Lights. Can he get another win here? He'll start on pole, coming out of the final corner on the racetrack. We'll look to go green into the punch off zone. Field set, good start. Green, green, green. And they'll race their way down into turn number one. Arta Petrov slotting right in behind. Let's see how they are through turn number one here. Very quick corner. We've seen some issues here before, but drivers clean and green through. We had some trouble in the opening USF 2000 race, but so far, Indy Pro looking pretty good here. They worked their way down to the keyhole. Outside goes Petrov, and it looks like a mid-corner correction for Rasmus. It almost got into Petrov, and that's going to put the fight from further back as well. Look at Hunter McElroy. That's Jacob Abel up to P3. Good start, John, for Jacob Abel. Absolutely, from row number two and uh, coming down into the view of Tom Michaels. Tom, how's it looking? It is side by side as they come through. Turn number four. We watch them as they come through that number one car. Driver off. Driver off, guys. Driver off. Petra. And we've got a car off 
right in front of us here. That is, looks to be the... It's Kiffin Simpson, the 22, I believe, Tom. And that car is stuck. It's high-sided. So it cannot move right now. So we're going to have to have a, a full course yellow if they can't get that one moved. Indeed, Tom, driver off the racetrack. We're not seeing that on the screen as of yet as we're going to come around to complete lap number one. And indeed, I believe, are they slowed up yet? No, still on the throttle. No, here we go. Now we no. got the full course full yellow course here at start finish. Yeah, yeah, and there's the shot there, Kiff and Simpson in the hook goes racing machine. Almost got it rolling sideways and, and backwards through the grass going off the outside of turn number four. But as Tom had said, high center there, not able to get back onto the racetrack, so we go full course yellow immediately. Actually, that's Manuel Suleiman. It is Suleiman. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, Simpson, Simpson came by. So it's tough for Manuel. You think about the fact that he had such a good run uh, with the win at Road America. We're gonna get we're gonna get a chance to see the replay here, guys. We'll have a little look at it, try to dial it in for you. So it was the 22 of Suleiman. Front driver's coming through. Rasmussen super aggressive early. You can see Suleiman got oh he got pushed wide by Hunter McElroy, went too deep into the corner. He yep. pushed wide, got into the side of Suleiman. He goes full, full four wheels off, and there's that backward slide, as I said. He actually gets up over top of the uh, the curbing. Surprised he actually kind of didn't get hung up to dry on the curbing. As you can see, the top part of the car just get on the curbing, but able to stay on the throttle. Did his best to try to do it. You can see the, the rear wheels continue to spin, but like you said earlier, uh, John, a little bit of dew in the grass, probably still a little damp, and yep. just not able to get the, th the, uh, the traction he needed to get out of there. Looks so close. Yeah, exactly. So, Tommy, is he still mired there, or was he able to get back underway? Right now, he's trying to get underway. Now he gets it underway. AMR safety crew had to push it around. They had it with the back wheels up off the ground. And for a while, he was spinning those wheels, which would not be a good time for them to drop it. <laughs> and that car just kind of squirt away. But finally, they got it uh, working. We've got the rest of the field coming around here, so he's not going to lose a lap. And the safety crew going to get back in position, and we'll be ready for green flag racing. Jacob Abel yeah. making a great start, uh, Rob, up into third spot. Uh, look at challenging for the lead there. And you're going to have another look here, I believe, good folks, at the incident that we had. A little closer there. We'll try to get a look back. You can see McElroy on the inside, Suleiman on the outside. McElroy may have gotten into the curb on the inside of the track and shot wide into yep. uh, Suleiman. Yeah, so that, that was the contact. That was a battle for fourth position. And as I say, very tough for Manuel Suleiman coming off a big win at Road America to kind of get himself back in the championship discussion a little bit, John. He backed it up with a seventh on Sunday, but it was a huge win for him and a couple of pole positions as well. Manuel, luckily, as Tom had said, though, they were able to get him out enough that he did not lose a lap, so he's going to be able to attack from the tail of the field again. It's like a... Are we, yeah, we're going back to racing this time by. Single file restart. Indeed, big punch there for Christian Raspin. Good start as he's able to get a jump. Same goes for Petrov. He gets that jump over uh, Jacob Abel as well. Jacob was really aggressive there at the start, but on this restart, fell him back a little bit. McElroy still holding on to the fourth position. We'll see what Suleiman can do. I don't, don't know whether or not he got back around enough. I didn't. Did we see Suleiman come back? Yeah, he is not. Yeah, he's way. They didn't give it him time to get back around, so Suleiman way back right now. Tough one for him. Yeah, if there's another yellow, he'll be able to pack up, but... Unfortunately, he's got a lot of ground to make up. That's a shame. I thought he might have been able to get back to the tail of the field. We may have a battle here right now for third position. Hunter McElroy going to work here on Jacob Abel. McElroy will start pole position in the race tomorrow. He's going to try the outside. McElroy outside of the corner. You can make it work there side by side through turn number four. McElroy will have the inside line to turn five. Textbook outside pass, John. Yeah, exactly right, because if you can hold it through turn four, then you've got the inside line coming up the hill. And uh, it's tough. Sometimes we see him go side by side all the way down into turn six. And if there's a guy right now that needs a bounce back, it's Hunter McElroy. He comes into the event 76 points behind, running third right now. The driver he's chasing is P1 right now, but he does get to come back tomorrow uh, and start on the pole position. So McElroy potentially looking for that, that turnaround, that pivot here in the 2021 season. Top two beginning to draw away a little bit uh, as Hunter McElroy is going to have to pedal hard to catch up with Petroff and stay with these leaders. Right behind Abel is Braden Eves. P5, and, and I'll update you, John, those of you may have watched qualifying with us, Braden Eves kept popping up and then falling down, popping up and falling down. He had got a penalty, lost his fastest lap because he impeded Christian Rasmussen when he came out on fresh tires. Braden pleaded his case that, you know, there's only so, so much I can do when the tires are, are cold like that. I can't go off track, uh, but they end up losing. That's why. So he kept going to pole, kept dropping down. He would have, would have had the fourth, uh, fourth spot. He's going to start eighth tomorrow. So deep penalty for Braden Eves, although he's going to work right now on Jacob Abel for P4. 
Christian Rasmussen has the fastest lap of the race so far, slightly quicker than uh, Petrov. Suleiman with the third fastest lap, because obviously he's got clear track as he's driving hard to try to catch up. There he is now. Just Indeed, by just by us. Exactly right, John. There they're coming through turn number five. And Artem Petrov having a pretty good run here now. We're looking to work his, his way up uh, a little higher, even up here right now. Being told that uh, the number 91 of Braden Eves getting a uh, blocking warning. The Eves uh, trying to hold off at that point, likely Reese Gold. Yeah, indeed, Gold just behind him. In fact, you know, it looks to me like Abel stretched away a little bit from, from Eves. So that challenge we had potentially for fourth position is uh, softened up a little bit. Eves now having to worry about young Reese Gold and six behind him and his teammate Kiffin Simpson. So we'll see whether or not Eves can dial things back in as they work their way back onto the front straightaway. Yeah, you can see the gap has grown in a big way. In fact, We'll look at some lap times. Abel might even be looking like he's ready to challenge and try to get back up here on Hunter McElroy. But enough said there. Top times, if you look at the times here right now, 119.7s for Rasmussen and Petrov. John, they're pulling away three or four tenths of a second faster than those behind them. Yeah, Abel with the fifth, the fourth fastest lap, a 120.1. Uh, uh, James Rowe got around Wyatt Bukacek on that last lap to move up into eighth spot. And Jack William Miller got around Hunter Yaney to take over tenth right now. So you should see them going by you right there. And we'll, we'll see if uh, Rose got some enough speed to potentially reel in Kiffin Simpson, who runs in that seventh spot. Good fight for the back. You see the side by side. That's actually Prakacic trying to go back around James Rowe Jr. Look at them side by side almost. Rowe aggressive on the exit, kind of took over the uh, the apex, drove it out to the outside of the track. And, and Prakacic wise to get, uh, get out of the throttle there. James Rowe leads them, leads them out of uh, turn seven up to. Turn number eight, they're through, uh, the leaders through turn number nine right now as they work their way down the hill, across the stripe into turn number 10, up to the blind turn 11, and those three, that's probably the best battle on the racetrack right now with Roe, Prakacek, and Miller. Yeah, I want to keep watching the gap here between first and second as well because we'll look at lap times as they come back across, but 119.7 for both drivers, now 119.2. So the heat building into these Cooper tires, and they are so evenly matched right now. Artem Petrov right there. Uh, not that far, uh, that far back, seven tenths of a second behind Christian Rasmussen, who's looking to get win number 18 in his road to Indy career. Five wins so far, coming in with 12 victories uh, from his USF 2000, two years, three wins in the first year, nine wins last year to win that championship. Already five wins this season. He could put number 18 in the books here uh, today if he's able to hold off Petrov. But then you look at the championship battle as well. Petrov, fourth position right now, 64 points back. He needs to get this race win to kind of shrink that up a little bit on Rasmussen. Exactly right. Braden Eves, the man who's chasing Rasmussen for the points championship, two, two points back uh, from where he started this race. It was a 32-point margin at the beginning. Now, as they run, it's a 34-point margin as Braden Eves back in the fifth spot. He's about a second and a half behind Jacob Abel, so not really in touch to move forward at the moment. It was actually pretty big. It was, it was, it's 18 points to 34 points. That's a pretty significant jump. Obviously, he's back in, in fifth, as you said. Uh, but I'll tell you this right now. You and I mentioned it yesterday. 34 points, that's more than a full race's points. Exactly. The most great points you can get in a race is 33 points. 30 for the win, one for pole, one for most uh, laps led, one for fastest lap of the race. 33 points on offer in any one of the races. Rasmussen, as they run, a full race in hand. That's got to give. That's a lot of breathing room for a driver like Rasmussen, who knows how he can handle and manage a race distance. No other changes in position as we're following a couple pretty good battles. Braden Eves currently in the fifth spot with Reese Gold and Kiffin Simpson closing up. Simpson only about three tenths behind Reese Gold, and then uh, a little further back, about a tenth, uh, second and a tenth, is uh, James Rowe, and he's got Brikacek and Jack William Miller all over him. So uh, pretty good uh, battles there in the uh, second half of the field. Yeah, good for James Rowe, running currently in the eighth position. And put down a good lap there of a 119.5, three tenths quicker than Prakacic. So he's built himself a little bit of breathing room, allow him to kind of focus forward instead of focus backwards. So Perca uh, rather Rowe can keep looking forward to see if he's quicker than Simpson. Last time by, four tenths faster, James Rowe Jr., than Kiffin Simpson. We may see a fight for seventh place here pretty soon as Rowe, who currently sits 11th in points, looking to try to see if he can't jump himself up into the top ten. Kiffin Simpson currently in the points at eighth position, 140, row 104. So it'll be an opportunity for him to potentially work his way into the top 10. 
Rasmussen and Petrov running almost identical lap times. The gap between them, about three quarters of a second. So uh, Rasmussen in control of the pace right now, but Petrov not letting him get away. On that last lap, uh, they had virtually identical lap times. So again, the interval stays right at seven tenths of a second. You know what a difference a year makes, John. You look back at 2020 uh, when we were here through our COVID schedule. Didn't get the season started uh, until uh, first week of July at Road America. We came here as a standalone event. I remember how weird it was being here as a standalone event. You and I were announcing from across, or we weren't even allowed to be up at the tower. You right. and I were by ourselves over in race control. What was race control? We announced the race. We're all excited. It's been a fantastic race. Then you walk outside, and there's nobody here. There's yeah. no fans. It was dead quiet. It was so eerie, almost surreal. Uh, but what a difference a, a year makes for a guy like Hunter McElroy. The event coming into mid-Ohio last year in USF 2000, I mean, Christian Rasmussen, struggled. Had a great start to the season. Two DNFs, essentially. Just horrible finishes. Comes here to mid-Ohio, a track he likes. Hey, you know what? I've won here before. I'm going to be able to turn this around. Starts from pole in USF 2000. Opening lap on cold tires. He drives off in the carousel in turn number 12. No. Coming into the event, he wins at Road America. Comes here. And it's already looking great. Could get a victory here. Just such a different approach to the event based on what happened the week before. You talked about Jacob Abel having a good weekend. He is right on the gearbox of Hunter McElroy trying to get that third spot back. And yeah, look at the lap time last time by. He's been catching up maybe a tenth of a second here, tenth of a second there. Driver's coming out. About maybe now three car lengths. I like the battle between uh, the 55 of Reese Gold and his teammate Kiffin Simpson, the 21. There, that's a pretty good fight right now. Kiffin's been a bit quicker. Then you look behind, James Rowe, another tenth of a second fast. He was a tenth quicker than Simpson, three tenths quicker than Gold. That could be a full fight for sixth, seventh, and eighth, to be honest, before we're all said and done. We still have a lot of laps left in this race. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, 17 to go. And uh, so far, uh, no, uh, no other chance for a full course yellow to slow it down. So we should get all the laps in. There is a 45-minute time limit on this one. Yeah, I think, yeah, unless we go yellow. I don't see a yellow happening here the way these drivers are they're kind of spaced out a bit. There's that gap further back. You see Simpson had a little look to the inside. Yep. Not, not, not an aggressive move, not a passing over, over opportunity or overtake. Just trying to fill the mirrors. Both those drivers just 16 years of age. Reese Gold and Kiffin Simpson just old enough to get the learner's permit now, which blows me away every time we go racing here. Uh, yeah, yeah, they can actually drive themselves to the racetrack. That's exactly right. <laughs> they couldn't for the last couple of years, though. That's, that's what's wild about it. Reese Gold, a, a young driver who has matured through USF 2000, a couple of years there with Cape Motorsports, able to get a, a, a victory last year to get that first road Indy win. He's going to have himself uh, a challenge before this is all said and done from his teammate, Kiffin Simpson. I want to throw James Rowe Jr. in there as well. He is up on the wheel. Let's look at lap times again between those drivers. You see them rocking across the start-finish line here. Gold, 119.5. Simpson, 119.6. Rowe, 119.5. So no change between 6th, 7th, and 8th. Both drive, all those drivers pretty similar. And that's one of the things we might see from Rowe. He may be able to close up and get close, but once he does, that's when you start dealing with the arrow wash. You lose that arrow off the front wing, and making the pass once you get there is tough. But Rowe continues to put his head down. The gap also, John, expanding a bit up front. Rasmussen and Petrov first and second now, almost a full second as, uh, as Rasmussen again, about a tenth quicker. Seems like he's a tenth quicker lap right now. Yeah, Rowe closing in on the back of Simpson, as we talked about. Bringing Brukacek with him. He's only half a second further back in that ninth spot. But uh, Jack William Miller beginning to lose touch with that battle in front as he's about a second back of uh, Brukacek now in that tenth spot. Hunter Yaney running uh, a distant uh, 11th. And, of course, Manuel Suleiman just hoping for a yellow That's so right. he can back up to the back. Let of the me field. get back in it. The funny thing, you look kind of up front here. I always look at the, kind of the, the different drivers in the field, where they are in their career path, too. You look at the guys at the top of the points, Rasmussen, Eves, Gold, Petrov, and McElroy. Four of those drivers of the five, I would expect are looking to Indy Lakes next year. And that's Rasmussen, Eves, Petrov, and McElroy. I, I don't think Reese Gold is quite old enough yet to be able to go. He may be able to go Indy Lights. I'd like to see him come back for one more year of Indy Pro. I think that would be the best thing for him. He'd be a championship contender out of the gate, could win the scholarship, could uh, score some victories. Uh, but four of the top five, maybe even five of the top five, thinking about potentially going to Indy Lakes next year. That means that the guys that are at the back right now that are learning you know, early, like Jack William Miller, Wyatt Prakachik, Hunter Yaney, those could be the guys that we see up front next year yep. when the graduating class comes in for USF 2000. They've got that full, they'll have that full year driving this powerful, you know, our second tier series, the PM18 machine. And again, new chassis next year as well, which makes things a little bit interesting. We're going to add the Halo type device to both USF 2000 and Indy Pro. Are they staying with the Tatus or are they going to go to yeah. 
It's, it's a TATUS as well, yeah. So yep. it's an update kit, so the, the, the team's just buying the update so they can use all the other parts to bolt onto the, the, new, uh, the new tub itself. Awesome. Yeah, another level of safety. You know, one of, the, <clears throat> one of the great things about the road to Indy, we tout it all the time, we run with Indy cars. So when the drivers are here racing, when they're in competition, and obviously racing is dangerous, we all know that, but we've got the IndyCar AMR safety team. Uh, Best in the business. Which is for our families, for our parents, they, you know, they can be rest assured if anything did happen, uh, the AMR safety team is there, and they are, like you said, the absolute best in the business, and it really is a, a, a calling point for the road to Indy. And then now we add in the, the halos for all three series, just trying to raise the level sure. uh, up another notch uh, for everything that we do with the road to Indy. Shout out to Danny Anderson and Michelle Kish, who, who run this series. They do such a tremendous job of it, and that's why you see this series growing and growing. 28 cars this weekend in USF 2000. Yeah. 1.3 seconds now the lead for Rasmussen laying down a smoke and lap of 118.4. It's at one rather. It's not like Petrov is slow though because he's quicker than he's a half second quicker than everybody else, but he's just not as quick as Rasmussen. He's looking very good here, stretching up to a 1.3 second lead. Again, the battle we're keying on. You see further back here. There it is there. I like this battle further back as well. And I think that Gold and Simpson are starting to close up a little bit here on Eves. Not by much, but just maybe a tenth of a second here and there. They are eight tenths of a second back when they were 1.2, 1.3 a couple laps ago. Yeah, Simpson really close on his teammate now with about four tenths of a second separating those two. Of course, the Cardinal rule, don't take out your teammate. So hopefully he won't do anything uh, foolish and uh, and uh, knock uh, Reese Gold off the track. But yeah, I have to believe that Ricardo Hunkos is on the radio. Just a reminding <laughs> of the, that. Hey. Kiffin, see the car in front of it? <laughs> Very similar livery to yours. <laughs> yeah. Take care of them. Exactly right. But again, within the team, hey. these guys are all paying to come race. You exactly know? The right. The bottom line is this. I'm here to race. Yeah, yep. I, don't, I won't take my teammate out. You give him a little extra room maybe. But if you can make the overtake, you make the overtake. And Absolutely. I, I'm really excited about Kiffin Simpson. I think we're going to see a lot of good things out of him in the next couple of years. He's, uh, he's a talent. I've had a chance to watch him come through karting. Won a lot of races in karting as well. And to see him now running with us in the, in the Indy Pro category, this guy's a championship contender next year for sure, 100%. He's leading the uh, Formula Regional America's championship right there now. There you go. You know, yeah. five wins out of six races. Yeah. So, yeah, he's going to be uh, he's going to be strong, no question. Kiffin Simpson from the Cayman Islands running for Hook Coast Racing. Lead now 1.5 seconds for Christian Rasmussen. This would be win number six on the season and win number 18 in his road to Indy career, only seven behind Kyle Kirkwood, but I think Kirkwood's going to try to keep that rolling for himself <laughs> as well. He's going to start on pole uh, for the race this afternoon. So yeah. He'll start second for the race tomorrow. Right. So. Yeah, Andretti is strong here this weekend. Yeah, Daniel Frost getting his pole, and uh, great to hear from the Singaporean. But Braden Eves, 34 points back of Rasmussen as they run. Reese Gold, though, uh, only 20 points behind Braden Eves, so that's a bit of an improvement for him as... Uh, Petrov in the fourth as they run. Hunter McElroy would round out the top five as they run right now. Really interesting too, John. You, you, I look at Indy Lights and all and the momentum we have for Indy Lights right now. There's a lot of great announcements coming out pretty soon. 13 cars on the grid this year. A potential for 14 or 15 later in the season. We've got a couple of drivers that are talking about uh, getting a couple of races in. Uh, you think about the drivers coming up from, from obviously from, from Indy Pro, our own internal ladder system. we got drivers in Europe that are looking to come over to Indy Lights as well. I'm thinking 16 to 18 cars next year. A, a new team's going to be announced uh, in the next month or so, uh, and a couple other potentially new teams coming into the program. So a lot of excitement there. I had a chance, actually, just to talk. You saw that Michelle Jourdain is here. Right. They announced their new program, uh, Andretti Jourdain Autosport. So they're going to be working together, essentially, to help bring some young Mexican drivers into the NTT IndyCar Series. Jourdain, um, Michelle has a team that runs the Super Copa Series down in Mexico. Well, they have a young driver running the Super Copa Series who's actually going to be here testing on Tuesday with Andretti's Indy Lights car. That's Salvador de Alba Jr. And I've watched Salvador many years as a carter. He's been running in the Super, Super Copa Series. And listen, there's a lot of excitement for motorsports and IndyCar in, uh, in Mexico. You, of course, got Sergio Perez. We've got Pato Award. Uh, there's a lot of great young Mexican drivers. Manuel Suleiman is one. But we're going to see very likely see Salvador de Alba next year in, in, in an Andretti Indy Lights car, which uh, I love. We love the fact we have an international field. Yeah, absolutely. The best uh, battle on the racetrack, still the one between the teammates, Reese Gold and Kiffin Simpson, about four-tenths of a second. Gold able to stretch that out just a couple tenths on this last lap as they come across the line. We'll look at the interval. Yeah, still about three-tenths of a second. That's the closest battle right now as everybody else 
kind of driving away from each other. Yeah. Jacob Abel falling off the pace of uh, Hunter McElroy just a touch on the last couple of laps. He's uh, almost a full second behind McElroy now yep. in the battle for the final podium. Scott. And John, look at this. Eves and Gold. Remember, that was down to, what, eight-tenths of a second. It's back to 1.2 again. So Eves put into, into a couple of really good laps. Half, half uh, Past the halfway point, folks. 14 laps down, 11 to go. One of the battles back there still going to be in Wade. Jack William Miller in the red number 40. Wyper Kotrick there in the black, blue, and white red at number 5 for J. Howard Driver Development. Right there into turn number 4. That's the scrap coming in there. Hunter Ganey behind them. That's the fight we're picking up here. Jack William Miller up over to turn number 5. Prakachik pushing on him still. Miller able to get up another spot. Jack William Miller coming in, uh, sitting in 12th in points. As I said, not able to start the... Um, Second race at Road America after a nasty barrel roll coming out of turn number three. Uh, Rasmus into the tried to go to the outside, an ill-fated move to the outside of Reese Gold. Touched wheels, got sideways, and nowhere to go. Jack William Miller up over top of him. Rasmus across the racetrack, and it, literally, if you saw the in car, then it was Prokochik going off, uh, over top of him, two drivers over top of him, but he's able to come back, Rasmus was on Sunday. Get that mental fortitude, stay focused, and came back for another race win, benefiting from a mid-race mid caution. Looking at the points as they run right now, James Rowe and Wybra Krawczyk has swapped places. Rowe up into ninth, Krawczyk back to 10th. That's pretty much the only changes we've seen uh, in the in the point standings based on this uh, the way they're running in this race right now. Intervals have changed a bit, but uh, that's the only difference that I've been able to see. And Rasmussen looking right now to get all 33 points. Started on the pole position, has led the most laps, obviously. We've got 15 now in, just 10 to go. Looking for the race win. Does have the fast lap of the race right now at 118.236. To Petrov's 118.259. But the one cool thing about our Cooper tires, which are so consistent through the run, there's enough grip at the end of the run to take advantage of the low fuel load as well. So normally we see the fast lap of the race coming very late in the race. So let's not cat let's 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 not give Rasmus that fast lap yet. Although for the way he's been running, that's it's a good possibility he'll get it done. On this last lap, though, Jack William Miller did not have a good lap. A 122 and some change. And that's allowed Bukacek to get right back on his gearbox. So keep an eye on that one. We might have a change for ninth position. 1.7 second to lead now. You see the drivers coming out of the final quarter on the racetrack through turn 12 carousel through 13. The left handed leads onto the front straightaway. Short front straightaway here into turn number one but an unbelievably quick corner. That's one of the ones where drivers really have to test their metal early, John, when they get here, right? They, they, they're told how fast you should be able to go through turn number one, but you have to convince yourself the car's actually going to stick when you, when you go that quickly. It's not easy. When I talked to Ernie Francis, uh, you know, climbing out of his car after his first win, he said that was the hardest thing as he made the transition from tin tops into the open wheel car it was to trust the downforce, you know, to, to realize just how stuck to the ground the car is. And it took him a long time because, you know, he's, uh, he's been a long time in a car with a lot of mechanical grip, a yeah. lot of horsepower. Now he's in a car that's much lighter, much higher corner speeds, and uh, you know, he's got to think, hey, hey, this can't possibly stick when I turn the wheel, but it does. <laughs> I talked to Ernie a little bit, uh, we were DMing on, on Instagram about that, about going back and forth from the, the Trans Am car to the FRA car, and I said, man, on a weekend like that, yep. how, like, how tough was that going back and forth? And he literally said, like yourself, he had to just tell himself to trust the downforce in the car. And that's what every one of these drivers in Indy Pro does, especially when they get into the car for the first time and they feel how much how much downforce there is. Man, I could, re I could have that much corner speed, and yeah, here's the data. It will work. Yep. You've just got to do it and trust it. Yeah, exactly right. And then, the, again, the step up to Indy Lights, exactly the same thing. More of everything. more Almost, almost double the horsepower. Obviously, more braking, more grip, more downforce, more of everything as you work your way up. And I think you, you talked about the difference, six seconds or, or so between Indy Pro 2000 and Indy Lights. That's how much quicker these cars are. So 17 laps down, eight remain here in the Cooper Tires Indy Pro 2000 GP of Mid-Ohio. First of two races for drivers here in the second rung of the road to Indy. And John, let's take the opportunity now to talk about what they're racing for. That's the key. Over $700,000 to scholarship to go to the Indy Lights or Indy Pro Champion to move to Indy Lights. For some young drivers, really, it's the only chance for them to continue on. They just simply don't have the, the financial wherewithal to do it. But you get that scholarship, you bring those colors, uh, you win the championship. And people in the IndyCar paddock take notice. 
service, no doubt about that. Absolutely. We've got a special promo going on today. We'd like to give a big welcome to the Tech Corps and the Robot Academy, who are guests of the High Tide Kids on Track program. It's a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Kids on Track is dedicated to lifting the spirits and inspiring the dreams of children throughout the country by providing unique access to all race events on the road to Indy, presented by Cooper Tires this year. You can learn more at hightide.com. Yeah, great program that we have as part of the Road to Indy. One other thing we'll be doing today as well, if you go over the bridge in turn number one, just on this side by the medical side by the new Cooper Tire Pavilion, the Cooper Tire stage is set up there. And I'm going to have both Christian Rasmus and Ann Braden Eves joining me there at 20 after 1 today. We'll do a special Q&A. Feel free to come by and, and talk to the drivers. Meet them if you want. Sign some autographs. And uh, if you have any questions for our drivers, we'd be happy to bring them into the Q&A. But we'll have a chance to talk to those drivers about their experiences. Uh, maybe ask them where they go to eat around here. We like to keep. We have to keep it light. A little bit of race, a little bit of fun. Exactly. Rusty and I had dinner last night, and uh, Robbie Gordon and his whole crew were up there having dinner at the same restaurant we were at. We did the same thing, uh, not last night, but on Thursday night, went to the uh, the local Mexican place uh, off the highway where we stay. Yep. Fantastic Mexican restaurant. As we're sitting there, you look over, and it's Max Chilton, Scott Dixon, and Marcus Erickson. <laughs> Like, we're in good company here this evening what, as well. What, no Taco Bell? <laughs> <laughs> now that's solid. No, no Taco Bell for Scott uh, at this, this particular place. El Chirito's a fantastic place. We love it. We go there every year. Rasmussen, 1.5 seconds to lead as Petrov continues to stay close. Only about a tenth of a second off. A really strong run here for Artem Petrov, but uh, just no chance at this point to closing up here on Rasmussen. And again, they come across the start finish. You can see drivers coming and working their way out of Thunder Valley, down out of turn number nine through turn 10, and back up over the rise of turn 11. Blind left hander leading into turn 12, the carousel. Challenging part of this racetrack. Now that's interesting. I, I talked to Daniel Frost a little bit on IndyCar Radio, uh, John, after his qualifying on the pole for Indy Lights, and said he was really, really proud of that lap. And we were talking essentially about, I said, where is it that you have to get good speed here? And he was just trying to carry some of the speed through the carousel and then through turn number two, really getting the car to rotate through two. The earlier you can get down on that throttle and roll on it, the longer that straightaway is going to be. I always say you don't make a straightaway longer by going deeper into the braking zone. You make a straight, straightaway longer by rolling on the throttle early, getting off the brake in the previous corner and getting on the throttle earlier. That lengthens the straightaway. And, and with these cars, especially in the Pro 2000, uh, I was in Greg's, Greg uh, DeGeorge's symmetric driver lab sim at Road America, and it, the initial brake hit is really, really aggressive, and you trail off as you get to the ex exit. But to be able, you've got to have a strong pressure on the brake. And I literally I, I couldn't get used to it because he's more kept telling me more, you need more brake. And that's what these drivers have to learn. Braking is one of the really key points. Braking and then being able to roll off the brake to let that corner speed uh, roll through the apex. That's something the added downforce gives you. Not yeah. only corner speed, but much better braking as well. So five laps remaining as they come across the line. Christian Rasmussen and Artem Petrov roll through a huge gap back to Hunter McElroy, uh P3. And, and I'll tell you, that'll, that'll be great for, for Hunter. He has not been on the podium since the uh, the first day of action at St. Petersburg back in April, John. So uh, this will be a, a big thing for both Hunter and Paps Racing as they try to get things rolling again with their Indy Pro 2000 program. Single car effort right now mid-season. Colin Kaminsky shutting down his program early to the first couple of races, but has elected not to complete the season. So Hunter all by himself. And that's tough, man. You only have that one stream of data. We've talked about that quite a bit throughout this weekend. When you don't have those two drivers that you look at the data, hey, listen, he's going this quick through this corner. This guy's with the brakes a bit earlier. When you're by yourself, man, you just got to trust in the driver, trust in the engineering. Yeah, exactly right. You know what? Watching Jacob Abel as well, his last lap about uh, three tenths quicker than Hunter McElroy. So uh, Jacob may be mounting a late race challenge here to see if he can uh, spoil McElroy's party on that podium. And we just right there through turn five saw the fact that uh, Reese Gold closing up as well on, on uh, Braden Eves again, back down to seven tenths of a second. Remember, it was eight tenths. He got it back up to 1.2 back down to eight tenths of a second. So Reese Gold looking to see if he can't put some pressure on the Ohio driver Braden Eves late in the race as we have just five laps remaining. So we could have ourselves some battle. We'll watch them as they come across the straightaway. Great shot there. If you're looking online, John and I are in the third floor right below the sea of Cooper Tires. <laughs> We'll wave at the camera. What is the official? Is this the Cooper Tire Media Center? Yeah, Press Tower. Press Tower. Yeah, yeah. Cooper Tires, of course, lots of signage. The spiritual home of Cooper Tire located in nearby Finlay, Ohio. Well, there's the shot of the drivers working their way on the front straightaway out of the carousel through, thir through 13. 
Abel now just a half a second behind McElroy. Quicker by about a, uh, what, a tenth a last time yeah. by. Eve's a 119.1. Gold, 119.1. Simpson, 118.9. Simpson cutting about a couple tenths of a second out there as well. Yeah, he's beginning to put some pressure on Reese Gold. So Reese with his eyes forward trying to run down uh, Braden Eve's. Got to keep his eyes on the mirrors too. His teammates coming. <laughs> and look at this. James Rowe Jr. quicker than everybody in front of him. Eve's, Gold, and Simpson for Rowe. Although back by about a second right now, but he was two or three tenths of a second quicker as you can see him closing in on the tail here as they work their way through four. So that's the battle right there for fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. James Rowe trying to get back up into the fight. The two Hunkos drivers, though, the 16-year-olds, Gold and Simpson, trying to go to work on the 2019 USF 2000 champion. Three laps to go as they come across the stripe this time. 30 minutes into this race. Here's that uh, battle for fifth, cresting over turn number nine. And I, I, I always love this camera shot because you can literally see how the car gets so light coming over top there. Yep. And you have to use all that rumble strip on the outside to use it, and it's, it's precarious for sure. Exactly right. So just a couple laps to go, and we'll go back in a bit to Christian Rasmussen, still watching this potential fight for fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Rasmussen now out to a 1.5 second lead, has gone out there and kind of held it. Best lap time of 118.1, turning 118.5s now. Petrov about two tenths quicker last time by, but too little too late with just three laps remaining. You always want to put the pressure on, John. That's the thing. If you can keep the pressure on, you maybe get the driver in front of you to make a mistake. That's obviously one of the ways, but but uh, Rasmussen was able to get himself a pretty nice little cushion that uh, he's just not going to make that error. Yeah, and I like to say, that when he's got that, you know, second, second and a half kind of cushion, he can control the pace, and, uh, you know, radio gets, gets word from his crew, hey, Petrov's beginning to to close in he can you know turn it up a notch if he has to hold on being told that jacob abel's gone by where's hunt there could be an issue here with hunter mackery jacob abel went by mackery to go to p3 on the back straightaway in turn number four we didn't have cameras on it so abel's now into third but mackery fell way back i don't know if he dropped a wheel or what happened tom michaels you were there did, did he end up going off or what happened yeah he went off they were side by side and as it turned off McElroy just uh, wound up getting off into the grass, was able to keep it going, but he lost the position. Wow, okay, there you go. So uh, Abel, we talked about him pushing on McElroy, pushing into a mistake, pushing into a mistake, making the overtake, and then you know it, John. Somebody's on the inside of you there. You do whatever you can to hold on to the outside because you know the outside becomes the inside for turn five. Exactly right. Man. And uh, so obviously Abel, you know, we saw him closing, so obviously he was able to get alongside there at turn four, you know, uh, realizing that he's running out of laps here. And so he's got potentially got himself on the podium. I'm telling you right now, Christian Rasmussen, obviously super impressive, right? We only got a couple laps to go. This guy's going to look to get his sixth win of the season here right now, putting in. But Jacob Abel has been this mid-season phenom here right now. He's coming off results of, of sixth uh, on the Oval Lucas Oil Raceway, podium third at Road America, fifth in the backup race, another podium here for Jacob Abel. Look where he is. He's moved himself up to seventh in the points. He's only seven points behind Manuel Suleiman. So Jacob Abel, that uh, team really starting to step things up. And that's another single car team. So, you know. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. And they were looking to try to get, they almost had a second driver right. at the start of the season. He's not able to put it together. But a tremendous run here for Jacob Abel as he's gone to P3, an aggressive move. I wish I could see it. I'm sure some in-car camera will come out on social media later <laughs> to see the pass. But Otherwise, white flag being displayed from Aaron Likens at start finish to our leader, Christian Rasmussen. Looking to get his, as I said, yes, yeah, sixth win. Victories at St. Petersburg, two in Indianapolis, Lucas Oil Raceway on the Oval, Road America last weekend. This would be his sixth win of the season, 18th win of his young Road to Indy career, only his third year in the series. And Christian Rasmussen. Working his way now down the back straightaway out of turn number two. Down through the kink three to turn number four. Artem Petrov, all he can do is continue to push. He's been chipping away at a tenth of a second a lap. Getting it down to 1.3, but just not quite enough. Artem Petrov still with a good run. He's moved himself. Uh, he's in fourth position, closing up on Reese Gold. Only 10 points behind. Gold was 20 points behind coming in. So Artem looking to get himself potentially up into the top three and still want to challenge for the championship. But this day has been all about Christian Rasmussen. What do we got for fast lap? Oh, Artem Petrov has stole the fast lap away, 118.35. Yeah, so Petrov with the, the fast lap bonus as well. Actually, it was showing Rasmussen at a 118.1 oh. at some oh, point. Oh, I'm sorry, right here, yeah, yep, yeah, indeed. Yeah, so, yeah. so he does still have it. Yep. Well, we're not done yet. Let's see if they can put a good lap time down. But again, out of the final couple of corners, folks, what a way to continue this uh, impressive season. Winner today in round number one. For Indy Pro 2000 at Mid-Ohio, Christian Rasmussen with the victory.
margin at the line, less than a second, kind of slowed up a little bit, I think, probably in the last couple corners, get through cleanly. Ends up uh, with the win over Artem Petrov. Jacob Abel, a late race pass on Hunter McElray. That moves him up into the uh, third position on the podium in third. Four spot, Hunter McElroy, as we said. Braden Eves, John, he was chased all race long by Reese Gold, but Braden Eves somehow able to come out with that fifth place finish. He's not going to be happy about it, but the bottom line is he was able to get the job done. Reese Gold and Kiffin Simpson right behind him. James Rowe made a race of it. It was a four-car battle as they crossed the line. Rowe coming home in that eighth spot. 34-point lead now for Christian Rasmussen, and as John said, fast lap of the race, 118.105. Coming on lap number 15, Petrov's late in the race, lap number 18, within about a tenth of a second, so very, very uh, quick for Petrov as well. You know what, with Hunter McElroy starting on pole tomorrow, Petrov is right there as well. I think Artem's got a shot at the win. I think McElroy's got a shot at the win. It won't be as easy a day, let's put it that way, for, uh, for Rasmussen. Here is your unofficial results of our first of two races for Indy Pro 2000. Christian Rasmussen with the victory in the number one machine, trying to back up that championship at USF 2000 last year. Artem Petrov in second, Jacob Abel third at your podium. Hunter McElroy had the podium spot till late in the run when Abel made that move. McElroy P4 starting on pole tomorrow. Braden Eves P5, Reese Gold 6th, Kiffin Simpson 7th, James Rowe Jr. 8th, Jack William Miller 9th, Wyatt Prakachik in 10th, and Hunter Yaney and Manuel Suleman round out the 12 drivers. Of course, Manuel, uh, Manuel, who got unceremoniously turfed off the racetrack over in turn number four, got back on, just wasn't able to get back to the tail of the field. I think he would have been able to pass some cars, but just no opportunity, John. Yeah, that's uh, that's sad. He, he turned pretty quick lap in the way. Uh, his best lap at 118.5 right in the thick of it as uh, the, the uh, Jack William Miller had the most overtakes, uh, passing four drivers on his way to a ninth place finish. Yeah, and Miller uh, get a little closer in the points there, but again, 34-point lead for Rasmussen over Eves. Uh, Reese Gold back by 20, and Petrov just 10 points behind Reese Gold for third as well. Pretty good run, and as the drivers roll themselves in here, I'm going to head to Tadis Victory Lane. Podium ceremony's coming up next. Rob Howden will be hosting, and then we'll have a, just a little bit of a break before we bring out the NTT Indy cars for qualifying. As our winner, Christian Rasmussen, rolls to a stop here in Tadis Victory Lane, taking the steering wheel off. As Grasmus is notching his sixth win on the season, working his way out of the cockpit and celebrating for the photographers. Great job for Christian Rasmussen. Getting congratulations from his Jay Howard crew. There's Jay Howard himself giving him a big hug. 